Hi there folks, uh, just a uh, another random video from me. I know that a lot of you subscribe to my channel, which I really appreciate. Um, this one is going to be based on Project Cars, which I run on the PlayStation 4. Uh, now, a couple of days ago, there was a update. I believe it was update uh, patch, I think 7.0, I believe. Uh, yes, it's actually just spotted in the bottom left corner, version 07.00. Uh, in that, there was not a huge amount of updates, but one of the things they did add was something called UDP. Now, that's something I'd never heard of myself, if I'm honest. Um, but what it is, is um, similar to on the PCs, uh, the PC can quite easily communicate with other devices. Consoles obviously don't do that so easily, but with this new UDP addition to this patch, uh, you can have external devices uh, running apps showing the telemetry from in-game on Project Cars, which is actually really good for people that use a setup using a racing wheel. Now, I use a Thrustmaster T100, um, nothing exciting, but does the job. Think of it as you will. Um, but I'm just doing this video just to show you guys exactly what um, is included, how to set it up, where to get the app, etc, etc. So, first of all, once you've got the update, you do need to activate this UDP setting. To do that, you need to go to your options once you're in-game, which is with Start. I'm thinking this will be the same with uh, other platforms on the Xbox One, but I'm not sure because I've never played it on that. Sorry about the autofocus, it's struggling now, it's gone uh, blurred. Once you've pressed Start to go to the options, you need to go down to Options and Help. Once you're onto there, onto the uh, main Options Help screen, the top one, which is Gameplay, as you can just see that is up there, onto Gameplay, and now at the very bottom you will see there is this UDP. I'll take the uh, thing off it so you can see it. Uh, it has a different num a different amount of numbers. I don't know exactly what that is. I don't know if it's like a channel or something. Um, but the app that I use, and I'll show you shortly, it suggests putting it onto UDP 5, which is why mine's set to 5. That's all you have to do to activate it in-game. So what I'll do is I'll uh, drop back out of that screen and get a uh, race setting up while I explain the rest. We'll do a Donington part with the Renault Clear Cup cars. I use a uh, Samsung Galaxy tablet, um, on it you need to download an app, now I'll show you where that app is. Uh, I believe this is also on um, iOS, on, on iPads and iPhones and stuff. I use Android mainly so this is showing you on here. Obviously you need to go to the Play Store, once you're in that it's quite an easy thing if you just search for Project Cars, sorry again about this autofocus, Project Cars. The one I use is PCars Dash. I had a play with HUD Dash. Uh, it seemed pretty good because it's more customizable. You can choose exactly what's where. Um, but on it, uh, if you want to unlock the Project Car side of it, it's uh, I believe five pounds fifty, something like that. The actual app itself is free, but you have to unlock um, games out of it. Ah, uh, there we go. So the key for oops, you can see there's a key for Assetto Corsa. There's all different keys available uh, for Project Cars is there, it's £5.49. So I went for P Cars Dash because I'm a cheapskate, that was £3.99. I've uh, downloaded that. You'll see in the what's new is the added support for consoles, Xbox One, PS4. So that's the new edition. Once you've got that, you just open the app up. Mine's already connected. What will happen is you'll get a screen which will ask, uh, it will basically tell you what to do. Um, mine did say uh, set your game to UDP 5, Whether that's channel 5 like I say I'm not sure um, but that's that's that. Once that's done and your console's on and it doesn't have to even be in a race I believe it does connect straight away. So I'll go through all the different screens with you. Uh, now I'm actually on a, I'm in the pits and a qualifying session you can see that the time is, is my finger here, look 13.44 it's linked with the session time my position, fuel, gear, uh, that'll be the lap time, mile per hour, and revs, uh, just like you get on some of the in cars. Uh, simply to change screen, all you have to do is tap it, which is I find quite useful within the game. If you're, you know, racing, you don't want to be looking for buttons in certain parts of the screen. You can just tap anywhere on the screen, and it will go through each one. Uh, I'll go through each screen with you, so I'll just explain this one. This one's quite useful. The only thing I would like is if we could have something similar to that. We could have the entire qualifying session on the screen. That would be quite nice. So you can see exactly where you are, how far you are off uh, the, the person in front, etc. But what this one shows you is your own lap times. So the current lap number is at the top. 
it's a bit bright to focus on it, current lap, the lap time you're on, and it's fairly self-explanatory. Each lap as you do it will appear down here, the time of it, the gap, sectors all on there. Quite good actually. Um, great for qualifying or practice sessions if you're just trying to hit that perfect lap. Uh, at the bottom is the uh, session best, personal best and TB. Uh, someone can tell me in the comments possibly. Um, team best? I don't know. But at the moment they're all the same. I believe that's probably the fastest car uh, on the on the track, I can't check. So that's that screen. I'll show you all this properly once we get going, which I'll uh, you can fast forward to if you like. This one is really serious telemetry. I do, I've never quite understood it. Um, but you've got your throttle brake, gear, steering uh, speed, RPM at the top, and it shows, I believe, so you've got throttle brake, steering speed, RPM, not sure. It, it's like, um, you know, a, a heart monitor It's the way it shows it. Again, I'll show you in game. Hopefully what I'll do is I'll do a lap myself and then go in the pits and change the AI driver so I can talk you through it whilst the AI is driving me around. I'm hoping that'll work, we'll soon find out. Next screen is pretty simple, but this one is cool because it does list all of the other drivers on there. Um, I'm not sure if you can highlight them, no you can't. Um, but it shows where they are on the screen, uh, on the track, if I just bring the brightness down, you'll be able to see that a little bit clearer. Um, so the guy that's in first is the yellow dot and he's currently going around there in a bit of traffic and there's me in the pits, the green dot. Uh, so that's pretty good just to see where people are. I mean, I don't think you'd use it in race or anything. You might use it if you're in the pits and you're looking for that perfect gap to go out in so you're not in traffic on your, on your qualifying and practice laps. Onto the next screen, this really is quite nice and detailed. Um, you've got oil pressure, water pressure, um, and then you can, with these two, uh, you can flip it around if you'd rather have your tablet portrait, you can do, or landscape. Uh, you got your steering directions, again I'll show you in game, your tyre pressures, tyre temperatures, gear, mile per hour, and your inputs there. Same on the back, tyre pressures, temperatures. Onto this side, the session time remaining, your position, fuel, uh, and possibly fuel pressure, I guess. Uh, brakes, temperatures, and the track and ambient temperatures. It's quite sweet. It's quite a nice detailed screen that. As you turn left and right, the wheels turn left and right as well on screen, and the uh, arrow at the top goes to whichever way you're steering. On to the next screen, I think it's the final one. Top of it, you've got your revs again, but these are more, they go into the middle as you change up instead of going from left to right to your shift point. This again will be quite useful in a good endurance race. Um, how much you would use it, I don't know if you can overburn fuel. I suppose you can try and, and conserve uh, fuel. Uh, but it shows you total fuel, target usage, how much you're using per lap, average and last. And then your lap still empty, which is quite nice and useful. Laps remaining in the session. Uh, this is your tyre wear monitors and temperatures and the um, condition of your springs and brakes. Uh, again, I don't know if they really do deteriorate in long races. I've never done a long race myself, so it's worth looking at. Down here is your damage to your uh, car itself, the bodywork, etc., and any engine damage, perhaps if you over rev it or change down too early, etc., and your oil and water temperatures. Uh, on the left hand side, similar to the previous screen, you've got your gear, speed, inputs, lap, and position. I'm not sure what goes there, we'll find out in a race. And that's that. So uh, what I'm going to do now uh, is finish this video and I'm going to start another video uh, of me in race. Um, and like I say, I'm going to try and get in the pits and uh, see if I can set the AI going around for me. That'll be quite useful. Um, see how it goes. So yes, I'll do a nice little drum cut for you. Okay, uh, unfortunately I couldn't really record myself doing a lap because I've got no way of having the camera um, watching me do the, the driving. So. I can't do anything about that. So what I have done is, as I said, I've, I've jumped into the pits and swapped over to the AI driver. So I'm now not driving, it's all down to the AI. But that gives me a good chance to show you um, exactly what's going on on screen. You can see it working really well straight away. Um, should turn the volume down. There you go. Um, you can see it working, that's on that main screen. This is the screen that I would use mainly. You can see the uh, revs going across the top, gear, speed. Lap time, 
lap position and fuel usage or fuel left. Um, it's all stuff that really you can just get off screen, um, but it just adds a bit more fun, doesn't it? Uh, if I turn the screen completely off, you can have that simulation. You've got nothing on screen that's blocking the way. The other thing I would probably have on is the rear view mirror, which you can obviously add in the edit hood options. Uh, so going through the screens then, now that it's it's doing it all itself, uh, I've just explained this one to you. This is probably my favourite. Go on to other screens. Here's the lap times. We'll come back to that once it's done a few more laps. But you can see it's following the sectors. Pretty long sector one because I jumped into the pits from the start. Um, sector two there, and sector three. He's just coming around to finish the lap, so you will be able to see roughly what he's doing. Excuse my uh, makeshift mount behind it. That's the only problem I did have is getting a mount to put it behind the steering wheel, but you'll probably have to do that. So there goes, finished sector three, now goes on to lap two. Now it works pretty similar to real life. Um, if you watch the F1 and, and touring cars and stuff, you'll know that if they get a fast sector, they go purple. So that one is all purple because that's the only lap he's done. As it goes down to complete sector one, which you should be doing any second, just after the bottom of Craner curves, uh, you'll see that sector one will be completed and it'll probably be a purple one. I think it'll be at one minute seven, there you go. So it shows you how much you are ahead of time, which is pretty nice. Like I said, mainly great for qualifying because in race, you're not caring about lap times, you're, comparing, you're more caring about where you're going and, and what position you're in. So this is the screen I told you that I don't understand. I bet there's some of you watching it going, oh yeah, that's, that's simple, that's this, this and this. But it's probably if you're really serious and you want to see where you're going wrong or where you're breaking too hard, I don't know. I can't really explain all this for you. Um, just off the top of my head, throttle and brake are green and red. So I'm pretty sure down here, you've got your throttle and brake lines as it's going along. Not sure what that line in the middle is. That may be steering because that's the brown color that's at the top. Again, feel free to tell me what it is in the comments, I'd appreciate it, so everyone else knows. On to the next screen. Uh, this is just the map again. You can see that Alan Lee S is in first place and he's over there, he's got quite a nice lead over there. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, um, I've noticed that first, second and third are like a yellowy gold, it's like, well it is, it's, it's like Olympic style, gold, silver and bronze. The thing is, silver is very similar to the other colours on the track. Um, again, if I just try and turn this brightness right down, that's a bit too dark. You can see it a bit better. Um, gold, silver, bronze, everyone else is like a turquoisey, greeny colour. There's me, quite a long way behind. Come on, AI, do it for me. It's catching up, to be fair. Um, it does show you as well people were, that are changing position, so I assume that Philip Sue has gone off. Um, it shows position changes throughout the, uh, the race, which is pretty sweet. Probably if you were sort of third party in it and, and not really in game, a bit like me now, you can watch how the race is unfolding. Next screen, okay, so oil pressure, water pressure, going up and down, probably as he's slowing, uh, sorry, temperature that is, not pressure, I had that wrong. So it says degrees Fahrenheit there. I don't know if I can change that metric. Does that now change that? So yeah, symmetric changes it. It's a bit annoying because I prefer miles per hour and degrees Celsius, but I think they may have got that wrong. I'm pretty sure Imperial is, is Celsius. But anyway, that's that. You can see what I was telling you about how it shows the wheels turning as he is turning. He's only going down Craner curves at the moment, so there's not much steering input going on. But that arrow at the top is going side to side as he's steering. As he hits the bottom of Craner curves, you'll probably see him turning quite a bit more lock. There we go. Um, it's amazing how smooth the AI is on the pedals, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so your RPM's there, your inputs, is 100% on the throttle at the moment, hitting 100 mile an hour, and gear four into fifth, and it'll probably be braking soon, there we go. Back onto the gas. Uh, and there's your tyre pressures and temperatures, which are all in green. They do go blue, green, red, depending on how hard you're pushing or not hard you're pushing. Every year, lap position, still last, come on mate. Uh, fuel uh, amount left, that's in litres, that's 14.6 litres. I do apologise about this focusing, it's not doing very well. I think screens, recording screens don't really work very well. Brake temperatures, well into the 700s, which is pretty sweet. Track temperature and ambient temperature. I haven't watched them long enough to see if they go down at all, I'm not sure. Perhaps as it hits night time, the, the temperatures will drop, you never know. I mean, this is a, I believe it's like a five or six o'clock race. 
So there we go. It also says at the top what you're doing, which is pretty nice. Renault Clio, Donington Park. Uh, the last screen is the nice detailed one with the fuel usage I told you about. So the target usage is got to do a lot better than that. I think that basically what he's saying is that I've not put enough fuel in. Um, so the fuel usage should lap is like just 1.2, just over. If he needs to do the whole race without pitting, he needs to drop down to 0.71. So that's my fault for not putting the right amount of fuel in. Laps still empty, there we go, look, 10.5 to 11, and there's 20 laps left, so uh, ain't going to get very far with that one. And then here's all the individual wheels and damage issues, anything going on. You can see that the brakes and suspension are all in fine condition, as is the engine in the car. Uh, the tyre wear is going down. With Donington Park being a mainly left uh, right-hand turn circuit, the left-hand wheel will deteriorate quicker than the right, so it's only 1% difference at the moment. Same on the rear. And then over here is our lap times. <laughs> it's amazing how the AI gets a pretty... <laughs> I mean, that is ridiculously close. Let's see if he gets anything like the same. I bet he will. It'll be a 120-0 or something. Here we go. Oh, blimey, he's on it now. He's catching up. In fact, he is catching up because I just saw one of the other cars just ahead look. So the AI is doing pretty well for me. Isn't it? Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, I believe that is everything. So... Yeah, it's definitely worth a go. If you're really into it and you want that simulation experience, I mean, if you're building one of those cockpits um, for your setups, it's it's a must-have. Um, as for working, excuse the phone. Ooh. Try again. As for uh, it actually working, I do find that the Wi-Fi um, sometimes isn't on it. I mean, whether that's my Wi-Fi, it shouldn't be because my PS4 is there, I do run wireless, my router is over there, uh, and I am on 100 meg fiber optic, so I'm not sure. I'm going to have to answer that phone and come back to you at this rate. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so uh, it's just the, the connection. I'd be amazed if it was my connection, because I'm on 100 meg. I don't know, maybe some of you American guys are going, well, hang on, we're on 200 meg, I'm sure you're probably doing better than we are, I don't know. But that's fast in the UK. I mean, I think the average in the UK is about 40 meg at the moment, so 100 meg is pretty sweet. Um, so it could be that, I don't know. I did notice with using that other um, app, I can't remember which one it was called. Uh, oh, I've lost it now. The other one that I use, not PCars Dash, the HUD Dash. When I used that, my internet went incredibly slow. I don't know if it was just by random or just the way it works with this UDP. Because obviously there's a lot of data going from this to the router, to the console and back again to be on it um, I think um, the latency is like 25 milliseconds uh, I mean I don't know if I can really show it because you can't see the gears there um, it's it's pretty much bang on I mean you can hear it on the audio the gear change So, yeah, I think it's pretty much bang on. There's every so often I've had a bit of a slowdown where this just stops for a few seconds and then boom, it's back on again. Again, could be my connection, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's early days, it's only just come out onto this console, so they may still be tweaking it. So, give it a go. Um, I did forget to mention, <laughs> I think, that the app does cost £3.99. Oh, cheers, AI. We're uh, off to the beach for lots of things. Uh, yeah, the app does cost £3.99. Um, so perhaps think about it before you download it or maybe even try that other one see how it is for you because um, that one is free until you want to unlock the project cars part of it so you get the basics i believe um yeah so uh, as usual guys uh, any questions anything like that comment in the bit below um and share it with your mates if you think they'll be interested with it and subscriptions are greatly appreciated thanks a lot guys and i shall catch you later